Hey guys, we're going to be building sight tapes now. So I'm going to show you two ways to get that sight tape dialed. The first is using factory tapes. These are the Spot Hog extended range tapes. These are pretty cool. The second is going to be the Archer's Advantage software building a custom tape where we take very detailed measurements. And so feel free to skip around if you want to use the factory or the Archer's Advantage method, but let's get into it. I gotta give a quick shout out to these limb legs. This is just too easy. We are gonna finalize the 20. Let's go check out the height. And I'm aiming for the top of that line. So we'll start with that. You need to remember where your 20 was. If you're using factory tapes, for example, this is a calibration scale. You'd actually put this on your bow and set the 20 right where your 20 is to work back to 60. Now the Tommy Hog has a wheel so I can see what it's on. So I'm just gonna take note of this number here and here and remember that for my 20. But if you use like a black gold or anything else, you need to make sure you remember where that 20 is as you work back to 60. My older bow was shooting close to the same FPS and my old tape was, was on pretty good. So I'm actually just gonna dial a little under 60 here. That was rough 60, we are low. We're gonna go ahead and move the sight. Here's where we're at now on our height. So we're getting real close. I'm gonna change the sight a little bit more. So we're doing the 20 yard pin. That's where we're aiming for that tape. We got that where we wanted it. Then we moved 30, 40, 50. You basically wanna walk back with that same pin and then you want to get to 60. Now my old tape was already pretty close and so I had to fine tune it but I was able to get on the target and this is our 60 group for that elevation. So we're going to use these for our measurements on our tape which actually plays into factory or archer's advantage. Our height on these two looks pretty good and then I did have a low shot but in average I'm gonna just go with that for now on our 60 yard elevation. Those 20 and 60 measurements are gonna come into play here. I know my 20 is here. I put on the calibration tape. Then I go to where I know my 60 is. And that tells me my, my tape number. I am tape 18. So that's how you use the calibration tape. So again, your 20 and 60 marks can be used for factory and archer's advantage. I'm gonna go slap on the 18 tape and we're gonna shoot it and just see how it does. I wanted to touch on this real quick. Some sites only have one indicator. That's totally fine. Typically, like on a three pin slider, you're gonna have 20, 30, 40 and start sliding with the 40. For example, what I do is I hold over if it's 20, 30, or 40 and then I only dial if it's 40 and on. The goal is then to get your tape starting at 40 on that 40 indicator and making sure that that is accurate. And so everything from 40 and on, that's what, that's what I'll use when I'm sliding. The spot hog, I do have triple, which is nice, but if you have a single indicator, you can decide where you want that to start depending on how many pins, what kind of slider site you have. This is just how I have it set up. Okay, so I just slapped on the factory tape. We're gonna send it at 70. We're just a touch low at 80 yards with factory tapes. 
So pretty happy with that. I mean, it's, it's tracking well. If you get a good 20 and 60, then factory tapes can take you pretty far. On this tape, I can actually go out to, I mean, 125, because these are the extended range spot hog tapes. So pretty cool. This is a great way to get a good tape if you do not have Archer's Advantage. I still prefer that method. Welcome to the shop. I'm gonna draw the bow back, and then I'm gonna show you what measurements you need to take for Archer's Advantage. I'm gonna show you real quick how to set up Archer's Advantage. It's 12 bucks a year, it's incredible. And so there's a lot of instructions here, so I'm not gonna to use too much of your time, but basically you're going to hit Add Setup, and you're gonna go through these three configurations, arrow, sight, and bow. The measurements that I'm going to show you are specific for the sight and the bow, and then you'll want to enter your arrow information here, and you can choose the shaft, but the point details. A little tip here is you do want to weigh your arrow and get this calculated weight to match. So I would suggest that. And if you're not sure on certain components, there are generic options. Just make sure everything is secure. You've got the safety on here. When you're working around the tension, be extra careful. The first measurement we're going to do is peep height. To get that, what we're going to do is we're going to measure the peep. We're going to take this measurement here. And then you want to write that down and then take the arrow shaft. So what you're trying to do is find the radius. Of these, write it down on your calipers. You're going to take this measurement side. You're going to measure from the top of the arrow to the bottom now. Don't push up on the string. So measurement one, two, both of those divide by two. Measurement three is from top of here to bottom of there. That is not divided by two. Add those together and that should be your peep height. If you're using like a Leopold rangefinder they have peep height as far as what you're inputting. And so that's another good figure to have for inputting that into your, your archery rangefinder. The next measurement is peep to sight on Archer's Advantage. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna measure the distance of the peep. I take that measurement and we're gonna divide that one by two. So we take the length of the peep, we're gonna divide that by two to get us in the middle, and now we're gonna measure from the front of the peep to the pins. We're gonna use a tape measure for that. So that measurement, you take the distance of the peep, divided by two, and then from your pin to the front of your peep, and that is not divided by two. And so that's what you do for peep to sight. Now, when you input your bow, you can select from a list of bows in Archer's Advantage. As you can see here, it's gonna automatically put in your brace height. I'm just gonna check and see here from the center of the burger hole right there to the front of the string. So mine is definitely longer right now. So. Let's do AMO draw length. I've seen a few different ways that this is measured, but the standard I'm gonna use is from the most center part of the grip. So right in there, all the way back here to the knock and so where the arrow is knocked right here. They add an inch and three quarters, and that's how you get the AMO standard for draw length. But if you're not totally sure if that's right for you, maybe call your bow manufacturer. There's a few different ways I've seen that measured. Let's do peak weight. There's a lot of good scales out there. The last chance archery one is one that I'm, I'm looking at currently, so I don't really have a great scale. 
This is just a basic one on Amazon. And basically I'm going to take the scale here and just be, be careful with this. Turn it on, draw back, make sure you have an arrow on and aim in a safe direction or just be extra careful. So let's go ahead and do this. Then reset it. Okay, that's it for, for peak weight. The next step is you're gonna to go to the side in tab. Now this does have my site, the Tommy hog. And so I'm putting in range one at 20 yards, range two at 60 yards and the marks on my Tommy hog wheel. And what that does is when I hit calculate speed, so it takes my site and gives me the exact speed there. Now I'm gonna show you how to do that with a black gold site here. It's nice that they have certain sites in here, but if you have one with like the vertical on the black gold, you're gonna to go to inch right here and then go to side in. The range 120, you'll actually put zero. And at 60, you're gonna measure that gap. And so for example, let's say it's that. That's how you do it if you have a vertical site post. And now we're ready to print the tapes. What I like to actually do is just go straight to print. And you can do site tapes. You can look at downrange stats. Pretty cool there. I'll do site tapes and then hit print. Now you can change how you do your site tapes, how far you want those to go, the amount of space spacing. So is every yard going to have a line? Things like that on the settings. So I already have mine set where I want it. I'm going to hit print. And what's neat is they give you two tapes with that, that speed that you got from all the inputs there. They also give you two faster ones and two slower. So I'm going to start with these, one of these middle tapes. I'm going to go out and verify it and bring these in case I need to make small adjustments. It's hard to get these perfect just because you are going to have some user error potentially, but this should be pretty close. And that's how you do it. You print these on a full page. It'll give you all your notes here. And this is, in our opinion, one of the best ways to make a tape. There's other ways for sure. We just have found this method to be easy. Don't let it intimidate you. It's really not that bad. Please let us know if you have any questions about that. I'm going to shoot 85. So there you have it. That was 85 yards. So for the factory tapes that we did, real easy. You put on the calibration. That's why I spent so much time on my 20 and 60. That way when I put on that calibration tape, it was right on. And so if your site doesn't, if you don't know where it's at at 20 and 60, like it doesn't have a wheel or anything, then definitely just put it on there and site it in that way. Mine, I can always go back to the 20 and 60. So that's how I was able to get a 20 and 60, slap it on. Then I use that same data for Archer's Advantage. And so here we are at 85. I'm pretty happy with that. I know that I was aiming here, so I'm a touch low but I'll take that at 85 yards. Well, I had a ton of fun with all three parts of this series. I hope it was helpful. I know that there was a lot in there, but tried to show you some easier methods, some quick methods. But at the end of the day, if you're going to tune your bow and want to shoot accurately and far, it's, it's helpful to know how it all works. So I hope that some of this information was helpful. Happy to help if you have questions, shoot us a comment. We're happy to help there. But again, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned, we've got a lot more in store and we'll see you on the next one.